Artificial intelligence, is it the next advancement that will change the world as we know it? Or is it just another passing trend in the technology news headlines? That question will not be answered in this video. What will be answered in this video is how well do AI models like ChatGPT and DeepAI understand potential modifications for retro handheld gaming systems. In this video, I'll be building the ultimate Nintendo Game Boy with all the modifications being chosen by ChatGPT. I'll also be giving this Game Boy a very unique design based on an AI image generator's depiction of the ultimate Game Boy. The end result is pretty unique, so you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned, it's going to be a fun one. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Are you a passionate creator looking to bring your next idea to life? PCBWay has got you covered. At PCBWay.com, you can easily order custom PCBs and 3D prints. Their streamlined platform offers instant quotes, expert support, and competitive prices. PCBWay.com ships globally, delivering quality products to your doorstep. Their fast and reliable service lets you stay focused on your projects. PCBWay.com can help you turn your ideas into reality. That's PCBWay.com. Prototype the easy way. Mad Mod. Okay, so I'm here at my computer and I'm going to start off by prompting ChatGPT and seeing what it says. Let's go ahead and get to know our AI assistant today. Hello, ChatGPT. ChatGPT replies, Hello. How can I assist you today? Tell me what you can do. I'm an AI language model designed to provide information, answer questions, and engage in conversation on a wide range of topics. Here are some things I can help you with. Answering questions. I can provide information on various subjects, including science, history, geography, technology, and more. Creative writing, if you need help with brainstorming ideas, writing stories, or crafting engaging content, I can assist you. Language assistance. I can help with grammar, spelling, word choices, and even provide suggestions for improving your writing. General knowledge. If you have any random questions or curiosities, feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to provide you with the information you're looking for. Conversational partner. If you just want to chat, discuss a topic, or have a friendly conversation, I'm here for that too. Please keep in mind that while I strive to provide accurate and helpful information, there may be limitations to my knowledge, especially regarding recent events or developments since my last update in September 2021. Okay, so I definitely think ChatGPT will be able to help me with this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ask. I would like to build the ultimate Nintendo Game Boy. Building the ultimate Nintendo Game Boy can be an exciting project. Here are some general steps you can follow. This time, the response from ChatGPT was a little long-winded and not very specific, so I'm not going to include the entire text-to-speech reading for this one. I will include the entire response here in text if you'd like to read it yourself. Basically, ChatGPT just recommended doing some research first, uh, choosing your components beforehand, being careful with the disassembly, and then expect to do some troubleshooting. I think to get the response I'm looking for, I'm going to have to ask a more specific question. Good luck with your ultimate Game Boy project. That was that was nice. That was nice of ChatGPT to say. So I'm just going to ask directly. Since ChatGPT likes to give me these answers in lists, um, let's ask it for some components. What parts will I need to build the ultimate Nintendo Game Boy? To build the ultimate Nintendo Game Boy, you'll need a combination of original Game Boy components and aftermarket upgrades. Here's a list of parts you might consider for your project. Okay, so ChatGPT has now given me a list of the exact parts that I will need to put in my ultimate Game Boy. So next, let's tackle these modifications one at a time. It looks like the first thing ChatGPT has listed is a Game Boy console. Start with an original Game Boy unit, such as the Game Boy DMG01, the classic gray brick-shaped model, or the Game Boy Color. You can find these consoles through various sources, including online marketplaces and retro gaming stores. For this, I've decided to go with a Game Boy Pocket console. These consoles are pretty much the same as the original DMG consoles. They're just a little bit smaller and they take AAA batteries instead of AA batteries. The reason I'm using a Game Boy Pocket is because I have so many of these on hand. If you're a longtime fan of my Twitch channel, you'll probably remember when I used to repair lots of handheld systems on my live stream. Well, I still have a lot of the systems that I would use for those live streams and some of them are in their original condition. I've had this one sitting around pretty much untouched for a while now. I imported it from Japan a long time ago. That's why these Pokemon stickers have the Japanese names on them. 
This system is in pretty poor condition given its scuffed up shell and its badly burned screen. So this is the one that I'll be using to create the ultimate Game Boy for this video. Before I can perform any modifications to this system, I need to take it apart. Okay, now that I have all my original Game Boy parts, let's see what modifications ChatGPT recommends, starting with... Sound upgrade. If you're interested in improving the audio quality, you can replace the Game Boy's internal speaker with an upgraded speaker, or even install a headphone jack for external audio options. For this modification, I've selected the Funny Playing Replacement Game Boy Pocket Speaker. This speaker is supposed to be able to get much louder than the original speaker without distortion. The website that I purchased these parts from recommended using a different amp with this speaker because it is capable of getting so loud. So I also ordered a Retro 6 clean amp. To install these parts, first I removed the old speaker. Then I ran some wires for the new Retro 6 clean amp. I also had to run two additional wires from this potentiometer that controls the volume. Here are the reference images that are provided as a wiring guide in the Retro 6 wiki. Then I connected each wire to the amplifier, as shown in the Retro 6 documentation. Here is how the amplifier will be positioned inside the Game Boy. Lastly, I connected the two wires from the speaker to the output of the amplifier. Okay, now that the sound modifications are installed, let's see what else ChatGPT recommends. Custom housing shell. If you want to give your Game Boy a unique appearance, you can opt for a custom housing or shell. These aftermarket housings come in various colors, designs, and materials, allowing you to personalize the look of your Game Boy. Well, I did get a custom shell, and I got a pretty unique one. Since AI is helping me out with this video, I thought it would be fun to see what an AI thinks a Game Boy looks like. I just headed over to the Deep AI image generator and started typing in a lot of different prompts like the perfect Nintendo Game Boy, or the ultimate Game Boy, or the best color scheme for a Nintendo Game Boy. I had a lot of fun playing around with the AI image generator. I ended up creating a ton of these AI generated Game Boys. Some really looked close to what a Game Boy actually looks like. Some were completely abstract and barely looked like a Game Boy at all. There were several of these images that I really liked, but I wanted to choose one that I felt would be easy to translate onto a real world Game Boy. So I ended up settling on this one. I like this image because the dimensions aren't too far off from an actual Game Boy. And I really like the color scheme too. It's sort of like a pinkish red Game Boy with like a blue slime graphic coming in from the right side. It looks really cool. Now to bring this Game Boy into the real world, I had to open up my image editing software and try to recreate this design so that it could be printed onto a real Game Boy shell. I did have to make a few revisions and some simplifications to the design because there's some limitations of the printing process. Things like shadows and gradients don't print out very well. Here's what the new Game Boy shell looks like. Pretty cool, huh? I'm very pleased with the way that this looks. Here's what it looks like side by side with the AI image. I think it actually looks a little better than I expected it to, although I can't unsee the face at the buttons here. I can't unsee this as a face. This looks like some character, but I cannot remember who it is. If you recognize a character that looks like this, leave it in the comments below. Anyway, I'm excited. I think it looks great. Let's move on to the next mod. Backlit screen. One of the most common upgrades is installing a backlit screen to enhance visibility. Popular options include the IPS V2 or Funny Playing backlit screens. These provide better contrast and visibility compared to the original unlit screen. For the new screen, I've selected the Funny Playing IPS LCD kit. This LCD kit is supposed to be very easy to install, especially if you have an aftermarket shell like this one. I did connect the wire from the power switch to the screen before actually installing the screen to give the screen a test run. It's recommended that you always test your screen before installing it to make sure you didn't get a bad one. Because if you install a defective screen and then find out it's defective, it's really difficult to remove the screen without damaging it even more. Anyway, this screen works and it looks really good, so I'm going to go ahead and install it.
Nice. Let's see what's up next. Buttons and silicone pads. You can replace the original buttons and silicone pads with upgraded versions for a better tactile feel and improved response. Look for aftermarket button sets specifically designed for the Game Boy. Ah, well, I guess I sort of jumped the gun on that one. When I ordered the shell, I also ordered some black buttons to go with it to match the AI image. I also ordered a new set of the silicone pads because the ones that were in the original Game Boy were kind of dirty and I wanted a set that hadn't been broken in yet. Glass screen lens. Consider replacing the original plastic screen lens with a glass lens for better clarity and durability. Glass lenses are available in different colors and designs, allowing for customization. The glass screen lens is a really easy mod because you could just pop off your old screen and put the new one on. It comes with adhesive on the back side of it. I did notice when I was shopping for Game Boy Pocket lenses specifically that there was limited colors in the glass screen lens. So I ended up going with the original color, the sort of dark gray. The next mod on the list is Rechargeable Battery Pack. Instead of relying on disposable batteries, you can install a rechargeable battery pack for convenience. There are custom battery packs available that fit the Game Boy's form factor and provide longer battery life. For the rechargeable battery, I found this really cool looking Clean Juice Air. This is a rechargeable battery and a wireless charging module that fits as a drop-in replacement for the Game Boy Pocket's AAA batteries. Since this is a drop-in modification, I can go ahead and reassemble the Game Boy before putting the rechargeable battery in. With an aftermarket shell like this one, all you have to do is remove one of the sets of battery contacts and then push the clean juice module into place. If you plan on installing this in one of your Game Boys, I would recommend being really careful when you're putting it in place. This PCB feels very fragile. In addition to all the mods I've installed thus far, ChatGPT also had this to say. Depending on your preferences, you may consider additional modifications such as installing a voltage regulator for stable power, adding a brightness control wheel, or even implementing a backlight color modification. For the other mods that ChatGPT mentions here, the brightness control and backlight color mod is handled completely by the LCD kit. I do think installing a modern voltage regulator is a good idea, so I also picked up one of these clean power regulators. The way that the clean power regulator installs is pretty cool. You just desolder the pins from the original voltage regulator. Then the clean power regulator can be soldered onto the pads. It sits flush with the Game Boy's PCB and it has a very clean look once it's been installed. I did have to desolder some of the amplifier wires to do this, so I probably should have installed this modification first. Oh well. Now that everything has been installed, let's take a good look at the Ultimate Nintendo Game Boy as described by AI. Well, there you have it. I've done my best to recreate what I think ChatGPT was describing and also capture the look I think DeepAI was going for. While I was shopping for all these cool Game Boy parts, I also picked up one of these cheap flash carts. These are pretty convenient, especially if you carry your Game Boy around. They allow you to use an SD card to store all of your Game Boy's ROMs. Overall, I had a great time assembling this device and I may try to do something like this again in the future. If there's a different game system you're interested in seeing on this channel, go ahead and leave a comment down below this video and let me know what systems you would like to have featured. I want to give a big personal thank you to everyone who left a positive and encouraging comment on my previous videos. I am always happy to know that viewers like you are enjoying content like this. If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button and go check out some of my other electronics videos. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.